is our basic ball bounce. This is what every animation major does in their first class all over the world. So um, I have I have a reading assignment for you, basically to look at and get an idea for all the um, all the different parts of a ball bounce, and um, that would be. The animated survival kit, pages 43 through 69. Those are in uh, your. Uh, those are in the teaching materials folder, and should be easy for you to find. So, uh, what do we do next? So, what we're going to do is we're going to do a bouncing ball. I often do it by. Um, vertically with three different packages and composite them, put them together in Premiere. But since this is summer and we don't have the time for that, um, I'm just going to have it go on a uh, normal uh, bouncing ball with a set of arcs that go across the screen. And this does several things. This shows at least four or five different um, principles of animation. Wait, let's see here, hang on just a second. Hmm, that isn't there, okay. Um, so what I'll do is I'll put these, uh, I'll put these viewings up. Um, these are Alex Becker's uh, arcs, timing, overlapping action, and squash and stretch. And I require you to watch these before you get into the project. And the URLs will be in the teaching guide. Or you can look up Alex Becker, Principles of Animation, Arcs, Timing, Overlapping Action, and Squash and Stretch. Next. So, as you can see here, oh, okay. Um, Where the animation was coming from was from um, Micah Buzan's um, tutorial on how to do a ball bounce. And I will also have that URL in the, um, in the um, teaching guide. So uh, you're required, required to watch that. It's nine minutes. So these are actually frames from uh, Micah's animation. And it illustrates how to do this very clearly. And actually, something that um, I have put out two Photoshop files in the teaching materials that basically are worked examples, one using the video timeline and one using the frame timeline. And for the most part, what I want you to do, and let me show you these. So, um, I want you to use something different. Uh, don't just use this ball, or you can make a new ball and sketch over it and turn off the old one, that's fine. But, as you can see, the other thing that I want you to do is that the everything here is completely set up for you. Everything is set up for 30 frames a second, animating on the ones, which means animating every frame. Watch what happens. Actually, I think I'm animating on the twos. I'm being bad. But I do want you to an animate on the ones. But the thing is, is that this is um, a couple points that I want you to think about. Number one, I want you to have a ball bouncing every, that moves every frame. And then secondly, people are doing all kinds of things in this class, like 
making different setups with the ball bouncing everywhere and and changing the background because they don't like the color. Well, you know what? I don't like the background color. We're going to get rid of the background color, okay? So what this is going to be is that we're going to get rid of the background color so we can green screen it and put in another background. So this is what I was saying before. So let's go back to uh, PowerPoint and say, here's how we get started. Actually, in the animation, I've got this all set up for you, actually. Um, so really what I want you to do is that I want you to think about the timing on this is, um, here we go, and the arcs. So everything moves in arcs, everything moves in curves, and the thing is, is because there's, there's a thing called conservation of energy. In other words, if the energy in, a, in like a ball bouncing in gravity didn't lose anything, like to the fact that you actually lose energy for the ball flattening a little bit. It gets absorbed into the ball, and actually the ball gets just a tiny bit hotter, but you don't you don't feel it. It's like maybe like a tenth of a degree, but it actually gets hotter, and that and that energy comes up. And then there's also wind resistance. So what happens is between the absorption of energy from the fall in the ball and wind resistance, the ball doesn't come up as high as it fell. And this is what we need to simulate. Also, if we threw the ball at a given speed, it would bounce. And also, because of the height of the bounce, it would fall shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter until it just falls on the ground. This is basic physics. So let's take a look here. Let's look at things a little bit more closely. Timing. If this is something that um, isn't in your mind from Becker, go back and watch that again. So what happens is because, I mean, I could go on about physics and saying that anything driven by gravity, it accelerates twice as much every second, and which is actually nine meters if there isn't wind, wind resistance, but that's just... That's just that. So what happens is that after one set, at one second, let's just say something goes so far, and then the second second it goes twice as far, and the third second it goes three times as far. It's because it accelerates; it goes faster every second. We can see this here in the diagram. So we can see it's here; it hovers a little bit, but you notice this is about twice as much as this, and I think Becker is, you know, we're not doing things exactly like gravity, but you know, it, if we were doing something more realistic, it should be here and then like here, and it comes down. So Becker is also using something else. I mean, actually, Micah, uh, Micah is using something else called exaggeration. So what happens here, it hovers up in midair, and then it comes down really fast, and then it smashes, and it comes up and hovers a little bit, and it comes down and really smashes. So, you know, this is yet another piece of anime, you know, of the principles of animation, exaggeration. So, this isn't completely like physics, actually. So, once we kind of get the timing set out, you know, which is something that you don't have to necessarily do. You'll probably you'll have to do it in animation too, but here I'm just I'm really giving you a file to work with. So here is the timing. If you think about it, speed at the top is slower than at the bottom. And if we use onion skinning, let me show you this, is that I have you can actually 
using this little thing here, you can go over to a video clip and I don't really recommend doing this at the moment but we can enable onion skinning. Onion skinning is the act of let's just say three and three and I'll just use normal and what it does is it shows ones in front, ones in back. So let's see here, let me move the timeline up a little bit. Squeeze out the time. Using the time stretch. Okay. But watch. Watch and be amazed. See what's happening? See there's the squash and the stretch and the bounce and the thing. Right? That's how that works. But the thing is Micah's ball bounce is a little uh, okay. But it's a little different from from what maybe I'll expect her to do. But you know, we're all animators, we do things differently. So as you see here, there's not a lot of squash and stretch at the, at the top and a lot more at the bottom. That's exaggeration and that's also showing the material nature of the ball. So say for example, if the, if the ball was a bowling ball or um, you know just a just a really hard super ball it wouldn't it wouldn't squash much but you know think if the ball was made of rice that would stick together you know or like um, or jello you know like gelatin or something like that you know if it doesn't splatter everywhere it 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 go boing 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 so this is what we're talking about but in doing this, what we have to do is something that's really super important. We have to keep the consistency of the volume the same. So say for example, if, if on the frame just before it hits, it is half the width and double the length, which keeps the same amount of, it keeps the same amount of, of area, you know? When it hits, it has to be like 200% wide and 50% high. Or if it goes more, if it goes like 25, if you went really crazy, if you did 25% as high, that'd be 400% as wide. It would it would have to it would have to all even out as far as like the area size. So step six, I've got your timing all set up. And really what I want you to do is I want you to go back in and add a layer and either put in an object with a, put in an object with a, um, you know, with a transparent background or draw in a new ball or box or something. And I want you to go through the project process of drawing out every frame in the PowerPoint, I, I mean in the, in the Photoshop that I gave you in the teaching materials and by the way everybody takes it off the screen screen no 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 has to be the screen this has to be the screen because we're going to take it out for the next project so let me show you how this looks you know easy peasy so the next class what we're going to do is we're going to take this, we're going to take out the green screen and we're going to put the ball on a background. Here, watch.
I'm keeping the ball, but, and then we're just going to do it again. For some odd reason, that didn't work. Okay. And my computer's lagging, so that's the, that's the problem. So that's it. So for Sunday, so for Sunday, all we're doing is, for Sunday, all we're doing is merely replacing the ball with another shape, another color. I want you to redraw the ball, put it on another layer for each frame. I think it's about 47 frames. It's 47 frames. More than anything else, it's just, you know the word tedious. In other words, it's just kind of boring. Um, this is just to show you the principles of animation. And then to put it out, all you do is you just render video. Put it out here. I like this um, H.264, high quality, and you're already running 920 by 1080, 30 frames a second. This is great. All frames, 47 frames. Let's do it. And now chew, uh, chew a little bit, and then it'll put it out, and then you're done. See here, it'll take like maybe 30 seconds for me. And then, what I don't want you to hand this in. I want you to keep it, and then we're going to use it on in the next class to composite it together with its own background and some titles. And that's it. So thanks so much for being with me this time. And... Um, I will see you tomorrow.